Hi everybody and welcome to another one of my album reviews. My name is Christian Eschbach and today we are looking at BOC, Blue Oyster Cult Secret Treaties. This album, I took way too long to buy this album. I was always a Greatest Hits Blue Oyster Cult fan, you know, obviously who doesn't love Godzilla, right? You know, it's a bit cliche, but who doesn't love Godzilla, you know? <laughs> okay, not on this album, though. You know, and who doesn't love Don't Fear the Reaper? <laughs> yeah. Not on this album. <laughs> Every greatest hit that you're going to think of off the top of your head, not on this album. If you're just a typical radio Blue Oyster Call fan. Now, if you actually pick up a Greatest Hits album or if you pick up a Best Of album, there are songs that are on here that definitely will be found on those packages. They're just not your typical radio-friendly songs. Uh, and the reason for that is Blue Oyster Cult is a weird kind of band, you know, like, as, you know, Sabbath was always open and free, like Metallica, you know, you can't really pigeonhole them into any type of music, but, you know, there's other metal bands where you can, you know, you got, like, your Thors and stuff like that, where it's always, or even Dio can be kind of pigeonholed with the type of, you know, metal that he was doing, you know, he was very much with the kind of the D&D &D imagery sort of thing, right? Blue Oyster Cult goes the other way. Instead of doing the D&D &D imagery, they go a lot more sci-fi imagery. And the sci-fi imagery is even less accepted than the D&D &D imagery is. So, you know, that really kind of sucked for Blue Oyster Cult in a lot of ways. You know, you get the odd song out there that does really well. And then the rest of them kind of sadly get left behind. And this is why I took forever to pick up Secret Treaties. Now... I picked up this album because it contained one song that I had heard elsewhere before. Well, I mean a couple songs, but one sp specific song, and that's Astronomy, and I'll get to that. Uh, but that was covered by Metallica, and that was my introduction to that song was Metallica's covering of it. And after I heard that one, it led to me going and picking up a Blue Oyster Cult Greatest Hits, because I finally heard enough songs that were either by Blue Oyster Cult or inspired by Blue Oyster Cult that I'm like, yeah, let's go pick up Blue Oyster Cult Greatest Hits. And then, you know, just kind of rolled from there kind of thing. Once again, I took way too long to get into this. I, I, I don't, I don't know why. Uh, so the albums opens up with Career of Evil. Great tune. Um, a lot of organ work in here, but it's organ work that sounds very much in the vein of kind of 60s rock. Like I hear a lot of uh, inspiration from here from uh, The Animals or from Steppenwolf. You know, those are the two that really come to mind with the sound of Career of Evil. Um, very much sounds like it could easily be on, you know, Steppenwolf's Magic Carpet Ride album. Except for the lyrical content, which is, you know, sounds like it should be on Alice Cooper album. <laughs> from there, we go to Subhuman. Subhuman, musically, is just a fantastic song. Lyrically, I really don't pay attention to the lyrics on this song that much. Uh, it, it's a good playing in the background song to me. First song that really catches, will probably catch anybody on this album, and it's because of how weird it is. Uh, for an album, you wouldn't expect... Now, if you're familiar with the term Blue Oyster, it is actually a reference to the bumhole. And the Blue Oyster cult would be a reference to a cult of people into the bumholes. You could say there's a whole giant gay analogy going on. And when you listen to Dominance and Submission... That whole gay thing just sounds a whole lot more. Now, it could be totally hetero, but it really sounds gay. And I don't mean, like, bad gay. I just, you know, the gay side of dominance and submission. That's all, you know, just because it's a guy that's making all the noises instead of a chick. Because they went with that methodology. So, it could even be the guy underfoot of a woman. But when you factor in the name Blue Oyster Cult, it just, you know, it, it's... Very ahead of its time, really, you know, like, 
wouldn't have been overly acceptable back then if people were putting these type of things together, you know, because this was done in, what, 74? So, you know, 74, not as acceptable, but today, yeah, sure, go for it. You know, it'd probably be a top 10 single nowadays, you know, someone remixes it or something like that. No. Uh, the whole thing, though, with Dominance and Mission is, is honestly a good tune. It really is, you know, it, it's, it's a playful song. It's, uh, I can see it even being, it, to me, it sounded like it also belonged on a Frank Zappa album. It actually uh, pull, brings to mind um, uh, The Torture Never Stops from Frank Zappa. You know. Anyways, moving on. Uh, we got Emmy 262. Okay, this one. Whew. Man, a lot of imagery and concept going on and storytelling going on in this one. On top of the fact that the music that's going is just a lot of high pace energy really cool but the music once again like a lot of this album sounds like it's a 70s produced album but some of the songs really have that early genesis of hard rock in there like i really want to say once again you know the animals or um what is it? Steppenwolf. Uh, even the Yardbirds, you know, like, but that actual sound from those recording periods, you know, like that, that it's almost like it was completely produced and mixed in a totally separate era. Uh, KG Cretans. That's a good tune. Once again, it's a background kind of song. Now, when we get into the last three songs on this album, they all honestly just flow one into the other, into the other musically, like the way they're producing everything. They just literally flow into each other. There's no clear cut break. If you were on an album, a uh, vinyl or cassette, you know, you might see where the individual lines are on the vinyl, but cassette, you never know. Um, CD, you know, because you can skip the tracks and it'll start you right at the spots. Uh, the first song is Harvester of Eyes. Harvester of Eyes is other than, you know, it's a song about a harvester of eyes, you know, so that's, you know, goes that whole weird imagery of theirs. Um, that sci-fi kind of vibe that's going on or whatnot. Maybe uh, in this case, a little more Lovecraftian. But, oh, wow, the music is just kind of so cool and dig it, man. The harvester of eyes. The harvester of eyes. You know, it just weird kind of diggy kind of song man you know you get into it it's just so much fun and from there we go into flaming telepaths oh man okay flaming telepaths is just like th this should be required learning in any school for music okay just because it's such a cool tune. It really, really is. Just the way it's played out and the sounds and the way they play with the music on it. Whatnot. Blue Oyster Cult is so highly underrated musically. They are, you know, like, it really sucks that at this point they're, they're kind of pigeonholed for the cowbell joke. But, you know, and it kind of sucks. But what are you going to do, right? Um... Then, after Flaming Telepaths, it goes into Astronomy. Now, Metallica does a beautiful version of Astronomy, but Metallica didn't have the piano. They had some beautiful guitar work. Instead, this one has the piano. I love the piano, and I love the way that this plays on this album. And it goes exactly with what I always love to say. You need to have a killer song as your last song on the album and having astronomy as the last song on this album was brilliant it has such a strong full robust finish to this album and it's a slow song it's a beautiful slow song not not ballad slow song just a slower beat song a slower tempo song you know but it's just magnificent and that's it that is how this finishes out now i'm gonna make mention of the cowbell joke and the reason i make mention of the cowbell joke is in the legendary joke of saturday night live they have 
Christopher Walken play legendary producer Bruce Dickinson. The joke is that is Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden that they're talking about. And Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden was the guy responsible for the production of all the reissues for greatest hits and stuff like that related to the Blue Oyster Cult catalog. The reason I mention that is on here it even states Bruce Dickinson as the producer of the reissue. He had nothing to do with the original recordings or producing the original recordings. He just was part of producing the reissues, which means he picked all the bonus tracks that went on here as well. I love Bruce Dickinson and the fact that he's got a sense of humor because when he picks bonus tracks to go on here, he's going to pick ones that are not necessarily cliche kind of songs. Now, the uh, first bonus track on here is Borman the Chauffeur. <laughs> Such a fun song. Oh my God. Lyrically, what a joke. But it's so horrible and boorish. It's great. It's perfect. It, 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 there's a reason they, you know, they do it. But it is such a good tune. It really is. So fun. So so fun to hear him play in the background. Uh, that's followed up with Mommy. Now, Mommy sounds very much like it's out of UC Andrews. And there are a lot of songs where I'm going to say someone from Blue Oyster Cult was definitely a VC Andrews fan because sometimes the lyrics and that, they just kind of, Ooh, you know, uh, but mommy is definitely one of those who kind of songs lyrically, you know, go look up the lyrics. They're fun. Uh, Madame Sadat follows that up. Uh, I don't have an opinion about that song really one way or the other. Uh, it's one of those songs where when I was, Right before I went to do the review, I actually had to go back and re-listen to it because I could not remember it distinctly in the top in my head, you know. Now I keep mentioning Steppenwolf, and I keep mentioning this without even remembering that there is a Steppenwolf cover on this album, and it happens to be Born to Be Wild. Does not sound like the original Born to be Wild. What they kind of did with this version of Born to be Wild is I want to say that they, it's going to sound horrible, but they took a kind of, they, they tomahawked it because it's got a, it's got kind of that cliche First Nations native do, 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 kind of vibe. And I'm really sorry. I don't know how to describe it better than that. But it's got kind of that, that cliche sound that you would expect. But it's the actual, you know, it's the original song. It's just the way they're playing it. They're giving it that kind of <sighs> Braves, Tomahawk. I'm really sorry, folks. I don't have a better way to describe it. That's the vibe they give it to it. And, and it, But it's really good on here, the way it sounds. It's really cool. It's a different interpretation. I'll still take the Steppenwolf version over this version, but it is a really cool interpretation of it the whole way around. And then the whole little thing finishes out with the single version of Career of Evil. Now, the reason why there's a single version versus a regular, it's the first track on the album version, is the first track on the album is four and a half, five minutes long. Too long for standard radio play, especially in most markets. At five minutes, you better be going for a bathroom break, you know, in these days of radio. Most of the songs on this album could not get radio play for that reason. But you cut the song down by taking out a little bit of the intro, take out a little bit of the exit, cut the, most of the solo out, maybe a verse. Cut the song down to three minutes and you have a radio single, folks. And that's how this album finishes off. It finishes off with a radio single. I love this album. This is a fantastic album. You should own this album, really. You cannot be a uh, a heavy metal fan without owning some Blue Oyster Cult, for starters. You have to own some Blue Oyster Cult. But you really should own this Blue Oyster Cult because this Blue Oyster Cult is fantastic. Until next time.
Leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Hit the uh, subscribe button. You get your notifications. And other than that, love you all. Peace and take care.